Hey guys, it is July 31st and tomorrow we start the Every Bit Counts Challenge, which means we'll be canning and putting stuff away all August. So what better time to take a look at what's in the pantry now and see where we sit. We're going to talk a little bit about the homegrown pantry and a little bit about some of the shortfalls that are happening in the store-bought pantry as well. So let's get started. So as we kind of scan over the pantry here in our homegrown section, it doesn't look like we've eaten a lot, right? And that is true. I've been tracking things this year and I honestly am surprised at how little we have consumed compared to what I thought we were consuming. But that doesn't mean that we haven't been eating. I've been canning already this year. You've seen some of those videos, the just can it's and also some of those freezer emptying videos, right? The freezer challenge ones. And I've already added, see, I've got my little list here of my 2024 canning. 138 jars already this year alone have been added back onto the shelf. So even though it looks a little bit full, that's because we're constantly maintaining as we go because, hey, we don't want to run out of food, right? So behind me here, you're seeing some pretty big gaps and empty spaces. That's something that we're going to tackle this year. And I'm really hoping to kind of come up with some new canning ideas. Uh, normally this would have a lot more pasta sauce and things like that, but because we've basically cut out pasta completely, we no longer consume jars and jars and jars. I mean, I was making 100 to 120 jars of different types of pasta sauce every year. So now I'm down to just my two rows of marinara, which I will probably still do one more batch this year, but I don't need much more than that because you'll see in a moment, I still have a lot of other pasta sauce. So we've got a big gap here. I don't know what's gonna go there. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. So as you can see, where the Fiesta corn relish is supposed to be, we still have cat food lamb meat. I do want to do the Fiesta corn relish. That will be a recipe video, as will the chili sauce. I'm down to four jars of chili sauce. This is something that I would like to see at least 12 to 15 jars because we added into our chili. I also love it in stir fries on rice mixed with my Thai sauce. So watch for that because that's going to be coming hopefully in August. Depends how the tomatoes go. So as you can see, the ketchup barbecue sauce still very, very full. The canned lamb, which we just did about a month ago. And then our Italian zucchini stew is still holding strong. I may do one batch of that. Depends on if we get something that I can use instead of the zucchini. But that's about it on that row. You guys have seen these shells before. You've seen what I've got going on. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to touch on the things that I think need mentioning or things that I want to focus on or things that didn't work out. So we're going to move on. I'm going to skip the applesauce row because you've all heard the applesauce story before. So basically it's those ready meal type stuff that we really need to keep replenishing. The chicken letter soup, the Southwest vegetable soup, the lamb stew, which we just kind of stocked up but not enough for my liking and the summer's best soup right at the end there which we're definitely going to get to in the every bit counts challenge because i think i've just about got everything for it what is on the bottom here it says charred salsa but that's not charred salsa that's moroccan stew i thought i was out of charred salsa yep there's a lot of mixture in there gotta love surprise boxes but as you can see we're kind of looking at our overstock or overflow and it's diminished a little bit. There's a lot of broth, which I really don't even count as food. So that's taking up some valuable real estate here and we need to get it filled up with good stuff. Okay, so we had to bring you back and I was gonna reenact it all, but it just wasn't feeling authentic. But we started moving jar, moving boxes to see what was in these. And I said, oh, cherry syrup, I have a gap for that. And then I went, oh my gosh, it's another whole box of ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do not need to make any ketchup this year. So I'm just going to quickly touch on here. I've got my garlic pasta sauce, which I still have nine jars. And then I have my basil pasta sauce, which I actually have 12 jars left. So definitely no shortage on pasta sauce when we really don't eat pasta sauce. So I think that's going to be on hold really for this canning season. So this row here looks quite full. The canned chili meat we just finished making that the other day and then we've got two rows here this is ratatouille and this is caribbean goat stew so none of these items are staying the ratatouille the caribbean goat stew the minestrone soup we weren't happy with them they've been kicking around now for three years even four years 
and they just need to go. So they're going to be chicken food and we're going to open up this space to hopefully try some of those recipes that I've been wanting to try and then we'll have space to keep them on the shelf. So really those are the highlights from this uh, little homegrown pantry section behind me although we do have some canning over on the other side which we're going to talk about in a minute but one thing I want to say is we're going to keep soldiering on at filling these back up for the next year and the winter season and one sort of side note we have one of our green striped Kershaw winter squash left and it's actually still in good shape we just processed a couple of our Canada Crookneck squash about a week ago and they were in good shape still so not bad considering it's July so I'm leaning against the freezers, but we're not really gonna talk about them too much in this tour video. The freezers are holding well. We have three lambs being butchered at the beginning of August. So I still gotta work on emptying them because there's definitely not enough space, but we haven't resorted to starting the fourth one yet. So this section here, mostly what you're seeing on the center and on these side shelves is my empty jar storage. We really have emptied a lot of jars this year. It's kind of mind boggling because when I write down the numbers and I track it, which I have done, and that's going to be in a video later on this year when we get to the end and can tally it up. I really haven't used as many jars or emptied as many jars as I thought I would have yet. When I look around in this space, I get so overwhelmed by the number of empty jars and lack of space to put them. So we definitely need to start filling them all again because it just seems better and more stored well when they're full. <laughs> and what you're looking at right there is what's left of our home pressed apple juice. We will link a video to Hickory Croft where we show the process of making this juice. It's a wonderful thing, the home pressed apple juice. Nothing tastes like it. I mean, now that we've had it, you can't go back to store bought, but we did 92 jars last year and we have 29 left, but apple juice season really doesn't come until end of September almost. So I think we probably will find we budgeted, is that the right word? We, we planned for about the right number anyway. So I think that's what we're gonna aim for again, which means we gotta go pick like 800 pounds of apples. So on the store-bought pantry front, there's definitely some real holes happening that do cause me a little bit of stress. I'll show you one in particular, the olive oil. The olive oil is something that I really, really like to have at least 12 jars on standby because it's a valuable product to have. But we bought all of our olive oil when it was $4.44 a liter. And it's all good two years expired now, but it's still good. I went to buy some, $17.99 was the sale price. And then I almost got suckered because I saw some at the store on sale or, you know, in the flyer for $9.99. And I thought, oh yes, this is it. I'm going to go stock it. It was only 750 mil. So shrinkflation at its finest for sure almost suckered me. But that's something in our upcoming uh, grocery haul I'm gonna have to break down and buy. It's like coffee and things like that. We've depleted our stash so much that I'm getting a little bit nervous that we don't actually have enough if anything did go wrong or if financial issues happened upon us. We like to have enough stock that we know we're good for a little while. So one thing that is still holding strong is our maple syrup. Now that we're watching how much sugar we're consuming, you saw in that grocery haul video from, I don't know, we'll link it above. We bought a lot of maple syrup. This is gonna last us years as it is. So you're probably seeing a lot of these pouches in our uh, store-bought pantry. We've really discovered that if you shop around at Dollaramas, there's some amazing deals right now. This unsweetened coconut, organic, nothing in it unbelievable for dollar 75 dollar 75 you can't get that in any grocery store so even though we haven't done a grocery haul video we have kind of constantly been doing these dollar store hauls and uh, maybe i'll do a little kind of compilation video on some of those things that we found that were really good deals on those things like nuts and all that sort of stuff so i'll keep pulling them from dollar store here dollar store there and maybe we'll combine it all together so one of the things that's really only changed in our lifestyle and we've added it in a big way to the pantry is almond flour and this stuff from walmart is the cheapest we've found three dollars for a bag even though it's a little bag it works great we only have to open one at a time so you don't have a big bag of almond flour open that you have to worry about 
and the price is unbelievable. You can't beat it. So of course, we've got like 12 of them stocked in here just to be on the safe side because eventually people are gonna get wise to it. When we go there, there won't be any. So the one thing I will say is some of these holes are developing from us changing our diet and getting rid of things that we used to stock. For example, right behind me here, this used to be a spot that had store-bought sauces and things like that, that we just really loved, even though we knew there was probably stuff in them that I shouldn't have, we still had them. So as you can see, they've either been thrown out, consumed or given away, and we have big gaps in some places. That's pretty much a wrap on the store-bought pantry. There's definitely some holes that you can see, peanut butter, salt, a lot of essentials that we've put off buying, and we really need to get them stocked back up because as we come into the every bit counts, there are some spices and things like that that we need vinegar i'm actually getting low on vinegar for what i usually stock so definitely stay tuned for the grocery haul video that will be coming and hopefully we'll be able to do a pantry tour at the end of the every bit counts challenge and everything will be so full and amazing that we'll be good to go for the rest of the year